Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an Acer Nitro or Nitro 5. The exact model is an AN515-43-R261. The model name is an N18C3. That inf information can be found on the bottom of the laptop on the sticker or inside the BIOS. In this video, I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open up your laptop, how you can service, clean up regularly once every year every eight months depending how often you use and the environment that you use how dusty it is just remember because i get comments people saying what was your before and after attempts this is not a benchmark it's a simple cleaning and repasting so my temperature before it could be really high because it, the fan could be really toasty and it clogged up or the thermal page could have been like a three four years old so every before and after doesn't make any sense. It's pretty much like having a car and you want to do your regular car, car oil change. So yeah, if you want to get the best result, I'll put the link for the best thermal paste you can use on the cheap ones and the ones I recommend for these laptops. This is just pretty much a servicing and cleaning for your laptop. Well, just remember by, up, by servicing and cleaning, you're not going to change anything in the system. Everything's going to be the same way that you left before you shut it down. Well, all right, so in this video, I'm going to cover up all the tools that I'm going to be using. Tool number one is a good screwdriver set. I fixed the screwdrivers, they are one of the best screwdrivers I ever used, and they have a really good bits, and these are durable bits. You're going to use a Phillips number one. If you get the Pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, like me, grab yourself a basic set. For the opening tools, I'll be using a guitar pick. A metallic one is really suitable to opening cases and covers. A pair of tweezers is really good to have. It's going to come handy. Also, you will need a workshop towel and alcohol. And isopropylene or isopropylene alcohol, 98% plus. And the reason I always say use a workshop towel is for one main reason. is As soon as you put a alcohol on it and you want to clean the capacitors the gpu and they have a tiny capacitor this one will rip apart really easy before damaging the components if you use a microfiber towels they can yank the components off the board and you can be in a big trouble so these two are really good to have a uh, screwdriver set now regarding the thermal paste you have options you can go to the with the best thermal paste out there with Thermo Grizzly Extreme or Thermo Grizzly Normal. These are one of the high-end thermal paste. You get the best result possible with this one. Or you can go a little cheaper with an Arctic MX4, which is really good. Or you can go with a new model of this one, which is an MX6. I'll recommend you guys go with an MX6 or Thermo Grizzly if you want to. In this case, for my clients, I'll be using an MX4 as he requested. Again, a good uh, new or used toothbrush is good to clean the dust mesh. It's going to come handy. So let's get it started. So first thing first, power off, flip it upside down. Down here, we're going to see a whole bunch of screws. We're going to remove all the screws starting from one corner. Don't forget about the one in the mid back. It's kind of hidden. And the one in the middle. All the screws are the same size and height. So don't worry about mismatching them. Keep them in one pile. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking that like and subscribe. I will greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the commentary. I appreciate that. All right, now that we remove all the screws, I think I forgot the one in the back in the middle. Double check, make sure you haven't forgotten any screws. Nope, I didn't. Now, what you want to do? We want to stick the guitar pick, the, this opening tool, guitar pick between the bottom cover and the palm rest right there, just wiggle it in there. And then you just want to twist it like that and you want to hit those lines. You think that like you're breaking it, but you're not. You're just snapping those clips open. Do that all around in the front, just open it. And then you want to go on the side, pick about two or three millimeter and just pretty much do this motion, pop it open all the way to the back corner left and right and now grab it from one corner wiggle it like this and while you're pulling it up a little bit and it should release the back end now you can take it outside use a toothbrush and clean up the dust machine here you can if you want to you can change this thermal pad 
is a one millimeter thermal pad for SSD, but it's pretty fine. You don't need to, they don't get really hot. Down here, we can see the double fan, two heat pipes right there. One single heat pipe goes all the way to the left side. Before we do anything, we're gonna disconnect the battery. To disconnect it, put your fingers right at the side of the jack and pull it back and bring it up like that. All right. Next, we're gonna remove the screws for the fan. So there's a two screws, one screw right there and one right all the way to the other side. Remove these two screws. We do need to remove this plastic in a bit. Now, we need to disconnect the fans, the fan connector. These fans, I don't like yanking on this cable. These are really fragile cable. So what I do, I'll put the tweezers right in there in between them and they just slide it back forth. And it will bring the connector out without any stress. And the one right in here, right there, just slide it like that. That's the best way to remove them without stressing the cable. Remove the three screws for the CPU and two screws, three screws for the GPU. So three and three, there should be a six screws in total. All right, once we have that one in there, so you wanna grab it between these two, grab the pipe from here and pretty much lift it up gently and bring it up. And there we have it. Okay, we can see this laptop uses a thermal putty. This is not a thermal paste, it's called a thermal putty. The thermal putties, they last many, many years. They don't go bad. So all you need to do is just accumulate it back in the middle, right in there. And once you put it down, then they just go back in its place. So put the thermal putties in place. I uh, don't recommend you change. If you want to change it, I'll leave the link for a good thermal putty. But these thermal putties are good still. You can just collect them and put them down in the same place. That'll be fine. But if you do want to replace them, depending your likings, I'll leave the good thermal paste. I can see somebody already replaced the thermal paste. They put a silver thermal paste in here. These are really bad. Well, the silver thermal paste from dust electricity and can damage and the capacitors all around it. So don't use any silver com compound thermal paste. Those are really bad. And you can actually damage the capacitors around there. So what I'm going to do right now first is Remove the excess of the thermal paste from the CPU. I'm gonna swipe right over. You see, the towel gets ripped before it can damage the capacitors or components. I really don't know why people use this horrible thermal paste. Uh, it is not easy to remove. It makes a mess. You can put a thermal alcohol right on top and use a toothbrush to clean it between the capacitors and to blend the old thermal paste. And then you just want to wipe over. That's why I always say use an alcohol 99% because it's not conductive and it will not shorten anything on the board. There we go, look nice and clean. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go over the GPU. Just as long as you clean the crystal dye, you more than fine, you don't need to go crazy behind it, underneath, or anywhere. Just clean it like that. And grab one more sheet if you need to. And we're gonna clean the heat sink. So if you wanna clean the fan system, you can take it outside and blow some air through here and push it out. Or you can just remove the whole fan system. To remove the fan system, we're gonna remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws right in here, and the fan should come out from this side out. Those are a double or triple. And let me see, this is a double zero. So we're gonna use a double zero. Let's put this one over here. 
I'm gonna remove the screws on the fan so we can clean up nicely the heat sink. Maybe it's clogged up with lots of dust and if it's clogged up and you try to blow some air through it, it will just jam in between the fans of the fan and it will just make sure the fan doesn't rotate there. There we go. Now we're gonna flip it. And there's a money shot right there. You can see full of dust. There's no place for the air to go through. Just a little bit right in here. So you want to take it outside, even in this side, it is kind of dirty. So we're gonna take it outside and clean it up and clean up even the fans nicely with a toothbrush and put it back on. You can put one drop of the uh, oil in there just to make sure it's a motor oil i'll leave the link three in one oil precision oil and or 3d printing oil that they use it for the machine and then just make sure you lift up this one evenly upward All right so i'll go outside i'll clean it up and i'll be back all right now you can see i took it outside I cleaned up with a toothbrush and clean up the fan put the oil I'll find with the oil I just what I used with just a syringe just take it grab a little oil in there and just inject one drop right in the hole and put this one on top all right now we're gonna put it back in and we're gonna put those tiny screws right over All right, now that we put all the stuff on top, the thermal pads in here, 0 0.5 millimeter and one millimeter. So 0 0.5 and one millimeter. And there's one one millimeter right there that goes right in here. You wanna change them, you can replace them. Just get the sheet of the thermal pads. They come in at different sizes, two millimeter, one millimeter. You can put 0 0.5 millimeter, cut them and put them in there. One millimeter, small tiny chunks in this one, this one, and this one. And for here, if your thermal putty is still kind of bland and it's still putty type, leave it on. It's fine. If not, check, change this one. I'll leave the link in the video description. And this one is a 0.1 millimeter and 0.1 millimeter, 0.5, 0.5 millimeter is on this side. These are for the power regulator. Again, these ones, they don't actually need to be cooled down too much. So those are fine. All right. Just remember, you can just squish the thermal pad I mean, thermal parties from sides and put it right on top. These are not conductive, so you're fine. So you need to put the thermal paste. So put one drop, one tiny line on the main die and one drop on the square GPU right there. You don't need to exaggerate. So I put one line in there and one drop right in the middle. I'm gonna bring down the CPU down straight. I mean the heat thing, I'm gonna bring it down. Make sure the screw holes are matching, aligned. And we are gonna put the screws that we removed, three on each. Always cross screw them, but in this case, you don't need to cross screw them because this is just a triangle. Sometimes they do have a four screw, then you want to cross a screw there. All right, once you put the screws for that, put the two screws for the fan. And we want to slide in the connectors for the fan, one on each, put align them. Make sure they go straight inside the connector, don't put it sideways in. And squish them in there. And there we have it. One last thing down here would be to put the bottom screws, I mean the battery connector. Grab the battery, make sure you align the connector in front of the jack. And then you want to pinch it right in there, just pinch them together. And there we go. All right, one last thing. Just grab, make sure everything is in place nicely. Just tiny push in there. And there we go, fans are spinning nicely, fan connectors, grab the bottom cover, slide it back, put it on top, squish the back corners, the front, the sides, make sure you those nice big click sounds, that's what you want to hear. 
And one last thing down here is to put the bottom screws on the cover here. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out to do your own servicing for your Acer Nitro 5. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in a the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just gonna finish up putting up the bottom screws.